Welcome to the Homestead Education Podcast, Sustainably Schooled, where we explore everything from sustainable living to educational freedom. I'm your host, Chris Maisie of ChrisandLarry.com. This is week two of our homeschooling series, Homeschooling for Beginners. Last week, we covered all sorts of different things. Um, we... <laughs> We covered the basics of getting started. And today we're gonna dive even deeper into creating a daily routine, integrating different subjects and balancing work and homeschool life. So let's get started. Any items that we do mention on our podcast will be listed on our new website, www.sustainablyschool.com. And it'll be under the specific podcast listing. So if you listen to week one, we have all of our listings there. If you're on week four and you hear something that you want to research more, it'll be under week four listing. So we want to make sure that you have all of these resources right there at your fingertips. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Establishing a daily routine. One of the most important aspects of homeschooling is establishing your daily routine. This helps provide structure and consistency, which are crucial for effective learning. But remember, flexibility is key, especially for homeschoolers. The basic, here's a basic outline. Um, to help you get started. So a morning routine, start with something that includes breakfast, some light exercise, something to get your day going. If you do a, uh, you know, a Bible prayer session in the morning, make sure you get the same routine every single day. Then go on to core subjects. Focus on those core subjects like math, English, history, and science in the morning when your children are most alert. And then breaks and free time. Incorporate short breaks to keep kids from getting overwhelmed. I know that one of my children who I adopted was uh, severe ADHD. So we did 15 minutes of school and then five minutes of trampoline time or walking to uh, one of our big gates and back. It gave about five minutes of, of that time for him. And then he'd come back and start some more. Use your breaks and free times for snacks and outdoor play, things that your kids need to um, restart. And then for afternoon activities, dedicate your afternoon to subjects like music and art and home ec. This can also be a good time for any hands-on projects or experiments for science and that. And then wrap up and review. End the day with a review of what you've learned and discuss any questions or challenges that the kids may have so that you can revisit those the next day. In our household, the basic routine is to get up and outside to feed our, and water our animals on our farm. Animals eat before us. That's one of our big rules in our house by, and we've always lived by that. Then we come back inside oftentimes with fresh eggs we've gathered um, after doing our chores for breakfast. By 9 a.m., our goal is to start the essentials of schoolwork. So we eat our breakfast, we get ready for the day. My kids always get up and get dressed unless we're having severe storm weather and everyone wants to you know, wear their pajama pants by the fireplace. But we tend to always get out of jammies, brush our teeth, brush our hair. We make that a daily routine so that we don't live in the rut of being home all the time and not actually presenting ourselves properly. In the morning, we do our Bible or English. We flip-flop between the two. We do math, history, and or science studies. We don't do every subject every single day. I have set up our homeschool more like college where Tuesdays and Thursdays we do one topic and Mondays and Wednesdays we do another. Some days we have lots of subjects that I wanna to touch base and others we have one or two. We also set up our homeschool four days a week since that's what Larry's work schedule is. He works Monday through Thursday 
So we do our schoolwork Monday through Thursday. Fridays we use as a makeup day if we need to come back and revisit something or if we had a big experiment that we want dad to be a part of or uh, we kind of make our routine like that. After lunch is when my crew works on their electives. They take online courses through out school. We schedule our some of our field trip activities after lunch. Um, any of our uh, doctor's appointments I try and do after lunch as well so that we can continue to keep that routine of our schoolwork going um, and not interrupt that. Now, remember, you do not have to follow the same routine every day. And don't be afraid to alter or change it for your family or your child's needs. Remember, go on that field trip. Visit the park. You can change your schedule if you want to. All right. Integrating different subjects. Now, this is another key to the homeschooling that we do. We try and integrate all of those different subjects all together. So for instance, you want to um, balance your curriculum so that covers necessary areas of learning, but you can combine subjects where it's possible. For instance, you can incorporate history lessons into reading and writing assignments. You can use Bible study as reading, create posters. Some of my favorite projects that we do with the kids are lap books and poster presentations. We give presentations on the weekend where grandpa can be there. So he, we take him to his house. I set up a big easel and the kids can present something that they've been working all week, whether it's in a lap book that we folded up and they've created, or we go down to the dollar store where they have three of their posters for a dollar. We do this and the kids get their art lessons in that way. You can combine your history and your science with art as well. Now, hands-on activities is another way to bring in your homeschooling essentials. So using hands-on activities and projects can teach multiple subjects as well. A science experiment can cover math and critical thinking skills. So let's talk a little bit more about this. There are science kits and even books that you can find out there in order to come up with experiments. Mom, you do not have to do this on your own, I promise. There are books. We have built potato guns, exploded watermelons with rubber bands, experimented with Mentos and different types of soda pop to see which explosion is the biggest. We've learned how to dehydrate and can and freeze dry foods to process things. My kids have learned how to bake bread and the science behind it. All of these things become school lessons. Know that and that will put your... Uh, your heart at ease that you're actually teaching your kids homeschooling. Everything you do is school. We've made dishes from every single region of the world. We re researched and then we did a project on the country that it came from. We even got a book on how to draw the U.S. That was a lot of fun because we had the kids make sure that they drew the, the major rivers that went through and they found important museums or fun activities like world's largest ball of twine and then they drew it on their maps so that was a lot of fun for the research that was there now mel science has some great hands-on kits so check them out again we are always going to start posting our links on our website under each blog post now some educational resources utilize those various educational resources such as books online courses and educational games Websites like Khan Academy and TED Ed offer great materials on different subjects. As I mentioned before, OutSchool has great resources for classes of all types. I know that my children have done a crochet class, sewing classes, um, art. Uh, Grayson has taken dozens and dozens of, of art classes. How to write music. Um, is another one. Um, Tristan takes guitar classes. Rowan takes different cooking classes online. Another thing is if you want to learn about different countries, try a Yum's box. They have snack foods from all over the world that you can have shipped in from specific regions. 
and then they include maps and interesting facts about those countries. So you're not limited to just a book curriculum or an online curriculum. You can get very creative with some of the things out there. Now, balancing work and homeschool life can become very challenging, especially if you work from home. I am guilty of that. I have worked from home my entire life. So here are some strategies to help you manage both homeschooling and work from home effectively. So number one, set boundaries. Establish clear boundaries between work and homeschool time. Use a dedicated workspace for each to minimize distractions. My studio is not a place where the kids come in to do schoolwork unless there's something in my studio that they're using for their schoolwork. Now, for those who have followed us on Instagram or Facebook or even our YouTube channel know that we run a laser business. We have signs cut all the time. We press t-shirts. We press tumblers. We have big, huge printers and laser machines and all sorts of things in our office. Now, my kids do enjoy incorporating some of the things they can make with um, my laser machines, but they do not do it during my work hours. We definitely have dedicated times for each. Remember, you do not need to homeschool during the same hours as public school. A lot of people are stuck in that routine. You want to de-school yourself first. You can school your children anytime that it's appropriate for you. So if you work a nine to five job, you can homeschool in the evenings or on the weekends. So you want to create a family schedule that works for you and your family. Like I said before, Larry's off Fridays, so we tend to not do school on Fridays. We'll try to do field trips with him on those days. So that way we can have dad as part of it. You do not have to conform to the norm. Remember that you make your own schedule. You know your kids better than anyone else. For us now, our crew doesn't need as much direction as they once did because they're all in high school. And they work a lot more independently now. But when they were little, I worked as an online ESL teacher from 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. We did our schoolwork after I was off of work. We did group instruction and then we went on um, to do one on one for anything that needed to be done individually. Now, time management is a big deal. I am guilty of not having the time management. So we use a planner. You can use a planner, a scheduling app you, to manage all of your time. Block out specific times for work, for homeschooling, for family activities. We actually have a digital wall calendar now. And that has been a lifesaver for us. It has pictures running on it until somebody touches it and then the calendar comes up. And they can see exactly who has a work schedule, who has a school schedule, when our field trips are. And they can go through and see there's also a daily task. So if someone is getting off task, I always tell them, go check the calendar and see what it says. Now, our next part to talk about is to delegate responsibilities to others. Involve other family members in homeschooling activities. Older siblings can help with the younger ones if they have a light assignment. My, your spouse can take over certain subjects. Remember, you don't have to do it all on your own. And I will tell you, grandpa is always rocket science experiments. My dad is the best experiment teacher there is. And I love him for that because I will tell him we've got something we have planned. And he said, hang on, I got this. And he'll take over for me, which is amazing. Now, self-care is so uber important. Don't forget to take care of yourself. Schedule times for breaks or self-care activities to avoid burnout. Have a bad day? Take your crew to a local museum. Have them write a paper on what they learned. We turn on the Discovery Channel and 
let the kids watch a specific show on something maybe they're already learning. There's tons of things on Egypt and traveling and, and that. And I have the kids write down five facts that they've learned. Now, when we present those facts, though, they can't be something somebody else has said. So the kids tend to write down 10 facts and race to be the first one that I pick to share those facts with. When they were little, this was a great activity, especially considering I had um, eight children at home at any given point. And when they were little and in elementary school, I had ooh, five or six in elementary school at one time. So we were able to do some different activities together, but they would race and race and race to tell me the first fact. Now, they would have to share this with a group. We do a lot of presentations in our house. I want to make sure that my kids are learning. We have a Cricut machine that the kids can cut things uh, out of paper and do titles for posters, or we've got lots of poster paint and, and other items. So make sure that you go to yard sales to find things, or if you have a friend that has a specific item, ask if you can borrow it for an overnight and cut as much things as you want. We did an entire season of scrapbooking where the kids were able to scrapbook some of the information that they, um, that they discovered. Now let's go ahead and hit on social and community involvement again. Last week we touched on socialization, but let's dive a little bit deeper in this. Socialization is cr a crucial aspect for your child, period. There's no argument over that. All children need to be able to socialize. It does not necessarily have to be with a classroom of 30 other kids the same age. Homeschooled children tend to be able to speak to adults a little bit better. They tend to be able to interact with children of all ages if you get them involved in activities where they can do that. So here are some ways to ensure your homeschool child stays socially active. Join homeschool co-ops or homeschool groups. I don't like the word co-op because I don't use co-ops um, for my children. I don't like when other people are teaching them because I don't have that same control over what they're learning. We did a co-op once and I had a lady tell my children that um, Christ was wrong that the belief in Christ was wrong. And I'm like, ah, the whole point of me homeschooling is that I'm homeschooling the beliefs in my family. So we tend to stay away from those. But homeschool groups in general, especially activity groups, are amazing. We have a local homeschool group here in, in Chino Valley, Arizona, where I am, that meets every single Tuesday at the park. And the kids can bring soccer balls or Nerf guns or whatever they want. And it's next door to the library, so they can go into the library. They can interact with each other. They can play basketball or soccer on the field. And it's all ages from preschool all the way up to... Um, high school level. And the high school kids will play with the preschoolers and dig sandcastles and everything else in the playground. These organizations, a lot of time, the co-ops or the groups will schedule classes, activities, and field trips. So make sure you find one that fits your family. Now, there are other extracurricular activities. Enroll your child in an extracurricular activity like sports, music, or art classes. Now, some school districts allow you to take classes at the school district as a homeschooler, but not as a public school online or an ESA student or other things. So you have to check if that's something you wanna do. I have had kids take music classes at a local school, but then you're set in that schedule that every single day you have to have your child there at the school. So figure out if that works for your family. Now, another thing is, is community service. Encourage your child to get involved in community service projects. This teaches them about giving back, but it provides opportunity to meet new people. Now, senior centers love homeschoolers to come in and play chess, especially the older kids. They love to be able to do different activities, as long as it's something that you can schedule weekly or twice a month or however you can do. So look at some of those type of activities and community centers or um, community service activities. Online classes will also give kids socialization aspects. Um, so check those out and see if it's something for your child. All right, tips for effective homeschooling. 
Before we wrap up here, I want to give you a few extra tips, a few more tips. Stay organized. Keep your homeschooling material and records organized. We buy a plastic shelf that we've had for years and years, and every drawer is different, crayons and colored pencils and markers. That way, when I go to refill it, especially now, July and August is when all the sales go for school supplies, you could fill that up for pennies on the dollar and use it all year round. The kids can go right to the different drawers for what they need. It makes easier uh, tracking of, of items uh, for your child's progress. Make sure that you get um, you know effective organization records, a binder for each kid so that you can keep track of different papers that they do. We have that printed out calendar for each, each child and we write down what they've accomplished each day just so that I can keep track of things that they're working on. Remember to be patient. Patience is a key. Not every child learns at their own pace and it's important to be supportive and understanding. If a child doesn't get it, let's say in math, it's okay to move that child to a different level. It doesn't reflect on you, your child, or your teaching ability. It just means your child needs to be at a different level. Here's an example. My son, Tristan, kept insisting he had taken algebra. He was adopted through foster care and was temporarily in a group home um, in Phoenix away from us for a year. And they required public school. They would not do our homeschool curriculum. He had to be out of the house socializing. I picked him up the next, uh, picked him up the next level of math, the um, Alpha Omega, the AOP geometry level for 10th graders. He was not at a 10th grade math level. So we revisited the ninth grade math level, the algebra. And although he still needs a little bit more one-on-one -on -one to complete it and understand the concepts, he's now thriving in math rather than completely lost and struggling. And there's no tears at this point. He's got this. Remember, you are not failing your child by homeschooling and you are not failing your child by moving them around to figure out what their needs are. Not all children start reading at four or five. I will tell you that. Some children don't start until they're eight, and that's okay. One of my daughters did not start reading until she was eight years old. We worked every day for two years getting those letter sounds, and she was not ready. Come to find out, she had dyslexia, and we had no idea. So we were able to adjust her reading schedule, and now she's an avid reader. She's reading, reading Bridgerton. She's reading... The Twilight series, she's reading Harry Potter. She's reading all of those things that um, a high school student should be reading and enjoying it. But it took us a little bit longer to get her started. Remember to seek support and connect with other homeschooling parents in your area for support and, and advice. Online forums and social media groups can be great resources. But just remember, there are more families out there than you realize. Ask your church pastor if he knows who homeschools in the church. Talk to your Boy Scout or baseball moms when you're at an event. There's more than you think who homeschool. All right, enjoy this journey. Finally, remember to enjoy this homeschooling journey. Celebrate your child's successes and cherish the time you spend learning together. I love that I get to know my children. I love that I learn about their loves and wants and are able to connect on an entirely different level since I'm home with them every day. Larry and I made a decision way back when I was pregnant with Shelby that one of us would always be home with our children. And while Larry was finishing school, I was working full-time out of the house and he was a stay-at-home dad. It doesn't matter who it is that's homeschooling as long as you're able to provide for your children, provide their school, and pay for your bills, either parent can do. We didn't want anyone else raising our children. We did the daycare for a little while while Larry was doing full-time school and I was working full-time. I will never do that again because I love being with my kids. There's been times where we have struggled financially in order to make this happen. There's also been times where we went without so that we could survive on a single income. Remember, you will get through this. It's just a rainy season. So in conclusion, that's all for this week on this episode of Home Said Education Sustainably Schooled podcast. 
I hope you found these tips helpful as you continue your homeschooling journey. If you have any questions or want to share experiences, reach out to us on social media or through our website at kristenlarry.com. Remember, we have set up sustainablyschooled.com as well with listings of all of the items that we mention in our podcast. Tune in next week as we discuss homeschooling on a budget. Until then, happy homeschooling. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.